friends, it's Kate here for my next video in the Betsy Tacey 2019 series hosted by myself and Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading and Katie from Life Between Words. And I'm really looking forward to talking about Carney's House Party in this one. This is the very first book I have not previously read. So this is a, my hot take on Carney's House Party. I finished it about an hour ago. And this was a pleasant surprise. Going into this book, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to think or how I was going to feel about it. We follow Carney after she has just completed her sophomore year at Vassar University, which is such an iconic college. I thought it was really neat to, um, to hear about it and kind of see what it would have been like at that time. We have a couple chapters while she's still at Vassar, getting a flavor for college life and the friends that and Carney has a roommate named Isabel, who she is fairly good friends with. They're, they get along really well. And Isabel has really expressed an interest in Deep Valley. She wants to know more about it, what it's like there. And Carney is a little bit unsure of whether she wants to actually have Isabel visit. You can see there's kind of some culture clash in here because Isabel is from New England and is very much like the only important parts of the United States are in New England. So I love that kind of um, culture clash that I feel is kind of still a thing today that like East Coast cities are the only important cities in the US. And uh, it's just really interesting to see it played out in this book. And just like I said, Deep Valley's very near and dear to Carney, and she just doesn't know if she wants to share it with Isabel or if it will make it enjoyable. But she eventually decides to invite Isabel, and Isabel's very pleased to be invited. So Carney goes home, and there's a couple weeks or maybe even just a week before she comes. And also what's very exciting is that her friend Bonnie is coming back from Paris and is going to be visiting her. And we saw Bonnie last in uh, Betsy in Spite of Herself, which is the second of the high school books. So I wish I had known kind of like before reading this, this one takes place in between Betsy and Joe and Betsy and the Great World. And it would have been really nice to kind of read this in order because then in Betsy's wedding, we see um, a certain additional character who we meet in this one and we see him in Betsy's wedding. And I didn't realize when I was reading Betsy's wedding that we would have had prior experience with him. Anyhow, rewind back to Carney's house party and Carney is really excited to be home and see all the familiar, familiar sights, but it is a little bit kind of bittersweet to be home because Tacey's family have moved to Minneapolis, or Tacey and her husband have moved to Minneapolis along with the Ray family, and there just aren't as many of the crowd that are there. But she does have um, Winona, I think, still lives in Deep Valley, or she's visiting a lot. I'm pretty sure Winona still lives there, and a few friends. And then uh, she is really excited for the arrival of Bonnie and Isabel. She is also nervous about how Bonnie and Isabel will get along. Isabel is just a very special friend to her, and she doesn't want um, there to be t tension there. And they come and visit, and they call it a house party, which is like this very old-fashioned notion of all of these guests coming to stay at a house for an extended period of time. It's something that would have happened more when you had a huge house and you had the space for guests to come stay for a month and they wouldn't feel, it wouldn't feel like you were kind of in each other's space all the time. But I was starting to feel as I was reading this kind of lonely for Betsy and Tacey and Tib and kind of thinking like, well, this is, you know, this is nice, but I don't know. I'm really kind of homesick for the familiar characters because it felt like, I don't know, I'm not as nervous for Emily of Deep Valley because that's going to be a totally different thing. So I'm not going to go in expecting it to be familiar. Um, I mean, it's in the same city, but it's not part of that world. Whereas this, I was just kind of like, well, Carney, I'm used to seeing her in the context of the crowd and I'm not seeing her, you know, in that context now. But they have a masked ball and a guest shows up and I remember wondering, you know, who is this guest? Who is it? Who is it? And then eventually it ends up being Betsy Ray. So from then on, I was very fond of this book. I really enjoyed it. And it is just a succession of fun party after fun party. And I loved that at this house party, uh, Bonnie, Isabel, 
Betsy and Carney are all sleeping on a porch. They have special beds made up for them on the porch. And I think as long as it didn't get too, too, um, cold, I mean, sorry, too hot because this is in the summertime, I think that could be really nice. It's in Minnesota. So I imagine Minnesota doesn't get too terribly stifling in the summer. I could be wrong. I just know they get a ton of snow in the winter time. And in addition to that, I thought it was fun to get to know Carney better. So I, I thought it was interesting because overall, I thought Betsy Ray feels more like a kindred spirit to me. Carney's very practical. She's very no-nonsense, which is a little bit like Tib. But there was something about her. She just feels a little bit less warm. And I just, Betsy's so romantic and she just loves looking at life through rose colored glasses. And in a book character, I just find that incredibly endearing. Even if life can be really difficult and bleak sometimes, it's just, I don't want more of that in a book. Do you know what I mean? So one thing though, that I did feel myself being more of a kindred spirit with Carney than with Betsy is that Betsy, um, sorry, Carney makes it very clear that what she wants to do with her life is be a stay-at-home wife and mother. And she's just very honest about it. That is what she wants. She knows that is how she will have contentment and fulfillment. She's a homebody. She loves tatting, making lace, and she loves to bake. Those are the things that are fun to her. They're relaxing slash energizing to her. And I have to say, I would have to agree with Carney. I have never been one of those people with career aspirations. I did get a college degree, but by the end, I was kind of like, huh, guess I got to get a job. Uh, I am such a homebody. I get so much joy out of having a cozy home, having a clean home, uh, which obviously can be kind of difficult when you have little people around. And I just really love to have a really warm and inviting place. And I know that might be kind of controversial nowadays for a woman to, to say that she can get like total contentment and fulfillment from staying at home, but it's so much more than just staying at home. You know, it's, uh, emotional labor. It's in, you know, making this really safe, um, nurturing space for your family. And like I said, you know, a, a clean place to be in is really nice. So I think we really kind of underestimate, um, what a gift having a really nice home to be in is and, um, having, parents that can put in a lot of time with their kids. So I, I, I really appreciated that about Carney and I like, don't, don't beat around the bush. If you just want to be a stay at home mom, just, you know, say it and you shouldn't feel embarrassed. If that is your aspiration and that's what makes you happy, it's not any lesser than anything else. I really appreciated that. And I don't know if I would see that in a book nowadays. I love that Betsy kind of like scoffs at her like, oh, you had, you brought your lace, you brought your lace with you to a baseball game. She can't, she can't believe it. Um, and Carney's like, yep, I enjoy it. I enjoy doing it. So you shouldn't be ashamed of, you know, the things that are, are fun to you. If that's fun to you. I just, I, I love, I mean, I have a booktube channel, so I love to be at home. I love to read books. I love to, to craft. I mean, I'm doing knit and listen. So yeah, I thought, I thought it was really fun and it was a really simple story. It was only like 280 pages. It was not very long. I'll see if there are any marvelous illustrations. It did jog my memory. So this chapter is called the little Colonel's house party. And, um, it says the little, uh, it's the little Colonel's house party. That's Betsy says that what they're having is, uh, and it says the little Colonel books for girls have been the rage during their childhood. So I promptly look up the looked up the little Colonel book series. And this was a 13 book series written for girls. I think the first one was published in 1900. And so of course I will be reading it. And I think it's set right after the civil war. I think so during reconstruction, which should be interesting. So yes, I will be investigating that. I, I'm kind of expecting not to like it. I'm expecting it to be like sugary sweet and kind of, um, moralistic, but I know that's a gripe that a lot of people have with little women and I love little women. So I'll be interested to see, let me know if any of you were also intrigued about, um, the little Colonel book series. And I'm trying to think of anything else. I felt like saying, oh, I know by the end of the book, I didn't really like Isabel much more 
there's this secret that Isabel has, and I think it's really weird the way that she acts the entire summer and then reveals her secret to the girls at the very end, knowing that she had that secret. It just, I did not like Isabel. She was too, um, I don't know how many of you have seen the Lark Rise to Candleford series, but someone is critiqued as being too buttoned up. And so I thought she was just far too buttoned up far too much of a snob about like where I come from is just so much better than any other place can possibly be. There's wonderful things about plenty of places, you know, plenty of different places um, that you can live are going to have wonderful things to offer. And so she just has this kind of like condescension about the Midwest. And it just really bothered me. Also by the end, I'm not sure how I felt about Carney Suter. Um, <sighs> He kind of has this Mr. Darcy sort of entrance into the story. And I love that notion. I love that like romance trope of going from hate to love. But he didn't make me love him by the end. He's just really gruff and he's kind of a grump too. So I, I think that's something like when I finish Betsy's wedding, I'm just like, oh, Joe Willard is just so meant to be with Betsy. He's just wonderful. They're perfect for each other. And he's just fun. Like he loves to have fun. And I felt that Sam wasn't really, I, I, I didn't, I was surprised, honestly, that how much Carney decided she liked him by the end. So I think he was a good guy. I just don't think he was very fun. But those are my thoughts on Carney's House Party. I'm really delighted that I finally read it. It was really nice to kind of get a background on Carney's story and also to get to see Betsy Ray again and know these things about her that we didn't know. Uh, yeah, so next month we will be reading Emily of Deep Valley, which I have heard very good things about. So I, I don't know if I'm scared that I have such high expectations going in, but I'm really looking forward to it because I've heard it's really good. And I please let me know what you thought about Carney's house party. And I will be back for another video very soon.